What's up, what's up, my friends? How are we doing today? I hope y'all are doing great. I hope y'all are feeling, you know, just... Man, it is beautiful, bright, and shiny here in uh, Wyoming today, and it is uh, just clear skies. I can't even see a cloud for as long, far as I can see, man. So uh, I hope y'all are enjoying some sunny weather, some happy days, and whatever's going on, I hope you're just feeling the blessings that God has bestowed upon you. Um, no matter how hard things get or how challenging, if you've followed any of my posts, I've uh, been sharing a lot about the challenges that we've faced lately. Uh, I, there's been so many obstacles, it's been wild, and... Um, but God always shows up. He just keeps showing up and keeps blessing us. And the reality is that if you woke up with air in your lungs today, it's a good day. So um, I just want you to take stock of that for the moment and be thankful that you woke up. And you woke up breathing and you're ready to go and that today's going to be an awesome day. Um, I really want to talk about something in particular which um, may uh, rub some people the wrong way. But... I hope, I hope it resonates with some people. <sighs> okay, so speaking to the Christians out there, you got to be aware that the enemy knows scripture, right? The enemy knows scripture. Satan knows scripture. He can quote scripture in and out, right? If you didn't know, now you know. <laughs> So the enemy could quote scripture. Being able to quote scripture doesn't make you a Christian. Being able to quote scripture doesn't make you a good practicer, a good practitioner, a good studier, a good student, a good teacher of the word. Okay, It takes more than being able to quote scripture. Um, and also, I want you to take stock of the fact that they know scripture because the reality is, is when social media has a way of sucking us in right? You'll just be scrolling along thinking you're doing nothing, right? Thinking, ah, I got like 10 minutes while I'm waiting for dinner to be ready or my movie's about to come on or uh, I'm, I'm, you're at work and you're watching that clock and you're just like, man, it's almost time to go. I'm not starting a new project, but they won't let me punch out until, you know, eight more minutes. So I'm just going to scroll here, right? And people do it all the time. Everybody does it. I do it. You do it. We all do it, right? <clears throat> Some of us are Worse about it than others, but some of us have gotten better, right? Uh, I know I used to be real bad about it, and I've gotten a lot better. Um, it takes effort. Uh, Kimberly, oh, man, my wife, she's amazing. She uh, she just finally, she's like, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to have a Facebook. <laughs> you know what? I'm getting rid of my IG. You know what? I'm done with this. I'm done with that. She just started crossing things off the list because she felt like it wasn't spiritually helping her. It wasn't. You know, she kept IG for a while because she liked being connected to her sisters and her family and uh, things like that. And she also liked, she was, uh, like, she subscribed to different recipes and um, spiritual IG accounts and things like that. So she loved getting on there and seeing her daily little verses. But there was all kinds of other nonsense that it's just kind of hard to get rid of. And I want to talk about X for a minute. X is the worst about it. X is absolutely the worst about it. Because the thing about X is... There is no holes barred on X, right? There's not. I mean, there's just nothing. Like, people get on there and bash you. People get on there and attack each other. People get on there and be racist, uh, 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 slanderous against people. Again, I mean, you know, and they've got the community note writers and stuff who try to legitimize and, you know, validate some of these posts and stuff like that. I actually recently, uh, I don't know, I actually was beginning of the year, I was approved to be one of the community note writers. Um, so people get on there and they validate some of this information because people put out misinformation and they slander people for no reason, right? They take things out of context and say they said things that they didn't and stuff like that. This happens with the Bible all the time. People will try to disprove your faith. They'll try to discredit God, discredit the Bible. And they'll literally take scripture to try to discredit it. But the thing is, you've got to, you've got to take the Bible. This is, I, want, I want to tread lightly here. You've got to take the Bible as a whole. You've got to take it in context with itself, right? Now, I don't expect you to know the Bible from front to back. You know, it's not, it's, it's not reasonable for you to be able to quote from Genesis to Revelations. Um, 
I don't expect you to know that, but you can't just take something out of context and never expect to not misinterpret something, make a mistake, have a little error. You know, you've got to be willing to learn and grow when you're studying the word, you know, and that's, that's good. That's okay. Um, and it's not compromising your beliefs to say, well, I know this, but what if I have it wrong? If I have something wrong, that means now it questions my whole faith. No, that's not how it works. But people try to do that too. People have sucked me into a, uh, some conversations as of lately, because I saw, uh, somebody posts something and then somebody else commented and, you know, um, they were battling their faith and I don't know, I felt the need to just, I, I was polite and cordial and I was like, hey, you know what, at the end of the day, I was like, this is the facts, this is the information that we need to be considering. So take A, B and C, this is fact and the rest of you can believe what you want, you can believe that, you know, just, you know. If it is, you don't have to battle over it. You don't have to call each other names or cuss each other out and things like that. But I've literally seen people, non-believers cussing out Christians and calling Christians swear words because how dare they spread the gospel on social media. But the thing is that it happens the other way too. I've seen countless Christians get on there It makes me, it hurts my heart, man. It makes me sad, like genuinely. Like it makes me feel sad to think that Christians, no, not Christian. They're not. That's not a Christian. People loudly proclaiming that they're a Christian get on there using profanity, talking about how they would harm someone, talking about how they wish death upon someone. That's not Christian. It's not Christian. First of all, as a Christian, your responsibility and duty is to spread the good news. The good news is that Jesus died for everyone. Those who believe in him and those who don't. Those who got it right and those who got it wrong. Because guess what? No matter who you are, you got something wrong. You might have got something right, but you got something else wrong. It's okay. Okay. It's okay, nobody's got everything right, but that's the problem, is everybody wants to have everything right because they think it invalidates everything else. If they got something wrong, then therefore, you know, it's like their ego, and social media is a bad place for this because it perpetuates this idea of ego and validation. Like, everybody wants to be validated, everybody wants to be told that, hey, good job, look what you did, look at the things you know. Paul spoke and said, it is worse to know the entire Bible, quote every scripture, but apply none of it, than to know only very little, but apply every bit of what you know. So if you're claiming to be a Christian, let's, let's break down that word. What is a Christian? I literally had some atheists message me on X, or actually it was in a thread, they not direct message they they publicly began attacking me and telling me what it meant to be a christian and they felt they knew more about my faith than i do let's let's get a concrete answer what is a christian a christian christian means christ like that's the most simple definition of that word christian Christianity is not a religion. Now, there are many denominations of different religions, Baptist, Protestant, Pentecostal, Church of God. There's all these different religions that may be Christianity, that may fall under Christianity. But Christianity is a belief in Christ, and it's to the act of being a Christian, which is attempting to live a life that is Christ-like. We need to bring back those bracelets that they used to have back in the day, back in like the late 90s and stuff and early 2000s. They were super popular. All kinds of people had them. WWJD, what would Jesus do? We need to bring those bracelets back because that is what a Christian is. A Christian is what would Jesus, is asking yourself that question daily. Asking that question to yourself before you take an action, before you speak, before you get into a conversation, before you go to your job today. 
waking up and saying, hey, I'm on my way to work. I'm on my way to work, but what would Jesus do? How would Jesus go about this day? You know, there's this, this idea of the unending prayer, and I really like it. I'm going to do another post just on that uh, next, actually. I'm going to do that next. Um, so y'all stay tuned for that one. But just it's having this open communication with our Heavenly Father. It's being able to have that dialogue with Him continuously and just talk to your, your Father in Heaven. Talk to God. So if, if you're having a dialogue, you're having a constant open line of communication. And you're developing a better relationship with God. Asking yourself daily, what would Jesus do? Asking yourself, hey, you know what? This person just approached me with this. What would Jesus do? How am I gonna how am I gonna respond, right? Like that's what you need to be thinking. That needs to go through. And, and you know, come on, man, we we have reaction times all the time, like split seconds, you know, y'all figure things out. So you start training yourself, right? You train yourself to think that way. Train yourself to process that on a, on a regular basis. And then it's not an active process. It's, a, it's just a continual fluid thing. You have to die to oneself. You have to wake up every morning saying, I'm waking up today. Good morning, world. Thank you, God. I got breath in my lungs. It's going to be a great day. Now, Lord, what would Jesus do today? How am I going to approach this? I got a job. It's cool. I got my kids. I got to take care of them. I got to feed them. I got to take care of these things. How would God approach my job? Is it the right job for me? Is this job glorifying the kingdom? Now, any job can. I'll tell you that. I'm going to jump from that right now. I'm going to tell you any job can glorify the kingdom. You could be at McDonald's and glorifying God. You are feeding people. People are hungry. There's a homeless guy that, you know, maybe somebody gave him five bucks and, you know, he went over there and got him a Happy Meal. You know what I'm saying? Got him a little, little double meat, double cheese. You know what I'm saying? You made that for him. And the man who handed him five dollars, y'all were both part of showing him Jesus' love. Now, you didn't, yeah, now, people will argue, well, he's still homeless, he's still hungry, he's still tired, he's still... We all got to do our part. That's the thing, though. We all do a little bit. That's the idea of tithe. That's the idea of, of offerings to the church. You give a little piece, and God does a whole lot with your little piece. And people will argue, no, the church is doing that. No, God is the reason the church is there. God is the reason the church is gathered. God is the reason that that congregation all assembled there. And God is the reason that every one of them felt the need to give as little as a dollar. Or as big as 10% of their check. Or even bigger. They gave 10% and they just tacked on a couple hundred bucks. Because they were just in a good place this month. So they just saw an opportunity to bless. There was a church, I don't want to get too far off, but there was a church um, that I was going to, it was a church I helped plant in uh, Austin, and um, we were going there, and I remember they were trying to, there was another church that was trying to be planted in San Diego, and so we were partnering with them and trying to help them raise their money. Well, they were like, I think they were $13,000 short of where their goal was, and um, our pastor at the time, Pastor Poncho, he was just like, he was like, you know what we're going to do? He's like, we're going to, I think it was like, I think it was like 3,500 or something like that. He was like, we're going to get them part the way there. He's like, they need like 1,300. We're going to get them 3,500. We're going to get them a piece, right? They're partnering with not just us. They're partnering with some other people. We're going to get them 3,500. And then what had happened was, and I don't remember if that's exactly right. If that was exactly the price. But what what the overall message is, is that there was an X amount of dollars that they were looking for. And we said we were going to give them a piece. We called, pastor called them up and called their pastor and said, hey, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to give you your piece, right? We're going to give you our piece. 
And, and that way you partner with a couple other churches. And he's like, we're going to get that money for you, right? We're going to raise it up. So he reached out to our, our congregation and told everybody, he's like, this is what we're doing, right? We're partnering with them. We're planting a church in a community that needs a church, a community that needs God. They want a place to worship. They need their building. They need their equipment. They need their stuff, right? So we're going to help them out. And so what he said is we're going to give them this piece. Other people are going to come up with the other piece. God's, God's going to work it out, right? I don't know how many other churches actually ended up doing it for them. But we came up with just slightly more than the entire piece that they needed. The whole X amount of dollars that we said we would come up with like a third or a fourth of or whatever. They, we came up with the whole thing and then a little bit more. Just by everybody giving a little bit. I think at the time, I think it was a, a tight week and I gave like 20 bucks. Like, I, it wasn't much. But I was like, I got an extra $20 right here in my pocket. I was like, you know, I gave him 20 bucks. We ended up raising the entire amount. Because everybody gave their piece. People like to frown upon believers for what we do. And they justify it and validate it by saying we're stupid. But this isn't new. This has been going on since the dawn of time. Like, you know, um, it, it's going to keep happening. We can't let it get to us. We can't let it break us. And we especially can't allow it to take us away from what it is we're doing, our ministry. Like, we can't stop being a Christian we can't stop loving our neighbor. We can't stop loving our fellow man. And we can't get to that point where we're just telling them nasty things and ugly things because then they feel vindicated. They feel validated. They feel like, hey, it's right for us to attack the Christians because the Christians attacked us. Well, no, the Christians didn't. A Christian did. Some Christians do. We as Christians got to take a higher responsibility. During the pre during the the, president, the pandemic, the beginning of 2020, it was like April, right after everything had been shut down, we were on full lockdown, full lockdown, like almost the entire country, right? There was a pastor. Now there was some pastors here and there that, you know, kind of resisted and were like, hey, we're not doing that. Um, there was a bunch of pastors in Austin that got together and they figured out, hey, we're going to do this online. We got, we got ways. God can supersede a lockdown, right? It's not a building, right? But there was, um, there was a church in um, Tennessee that the pastor literally got on Facebook, he got on TikTok, he got on uh, YouTube, and he literally posted videos cussing people out, a pastor. He cussed out, <laughs> it was President Trump at the time, but he cussed out the entire administration. And like, this was Something that I believe they were just doing the best they could. I truly believe, you know, people were doing the best they could. It was, it was a rough time. Some people just didn't know what to do, didn't know the answer, and they were just trying to figure it out, right? But he cussed out the, the entire government. <laughs> How do you do that as a pastor? How do you post a video? It's not like he just lost his temper and started swearing. No, like he literally pulled out his phone, turned it on and was like recording himself. Look, how dare you do this and I should kick your A and bleep, bleep, bleep and all this stuff. Like how as a Christian, how as a, past a pastor, the leader of a church, how do you do that? And then get mad at non-believers for their blasphemy. How do you get mad at a non-believer for their blasphemy? As Christians, we got to do better. We got to remember what the word Christian means. 
We gotta remember what we're doing here. Do better. I don't wanna harp on this too much. Let's just take stock of this. I think this is something I wanna elaborate on more. I'm gonna do a couple more videos um, in the next few days. I'm gonna talk just more about the idea of giving, the idea of everybody doing their piece and their part, um, about tithe and stuff like that, and offerings. I wanna talk more about the enemy using scripture against us. And I wanna talk more about us setting a, a better example and living like Jesus. So this is just kind of my intro video. It's like 20 minutes long, but I kind of just want to touch base on a few different things that I want to kind of like dive into deeper each one of those things. So I hope that, uh, uh, I, hope, I hope that you stay tuned and I hope you enjoy it. And I hope we can all learn from this. If y'all got comments, please leave them below. Um, I'm always open. I'm not perfect either. I get things wrong all the time. So we're all learning and growing and trying to be better for our family, for ourselves, for God, and for the greater good of the kingdom. Like that's it. You have to have a kingdom mindset. So let's go get it. It's your boy. I'm out.